by Design and I'm here with another Saturday showcase for the Funky Junkie Boutique and today I'm sharing the details of how I created this really fun mixed media etc tag. Um, this thing is huge as I'm sure you can see here's my hand here's the tag. I love the size of these tags. So very quickly before we get started I used a Tim Holtz small etc tag and yes believe it or not this is the small it measures five and a half by ten I believe yep and um, it's made of this really heavy MDF super thick great for mixed media I love these tags then with that I've used a bunch of beautiful embellishments and charms from the Funky Junkie Boutique and I've altered these and that's what this tutorial is about as well as a really fun mixed media technique that I think you will enjoy. So I use Seth Apter Baked Velvet in Dusk. That's this beautiful color. And then also the Patina Oxide um, which is a great aging agent. It gives that beautiful blue patina and then Stamperia Alice and I actually did not cut one single piece of new paper for this everything made with this is made with scraps which is part of what I'm going to share with you today so we'll take a quick look at the tag I took a Prima Venetian window and I added a panel of clear cardstock underneath the shutters to create this really fun shaker box and then I just trimmed around the back, traced around the back to get this image of the white rabbit and the dormouse is in the corner. So that's kind of the focal image for this. And then layered up some Prima flowers from the spring farmhouse, a beautiful filigree butterfly from Funky Junkie that I altered with paints. I used cracked pistachio distress paint and gathered twigs distress ink. On this tag. Um, also opaque crackle texture paste, crazing collage medium, and just plain collage medium. So anyway, shabbied up these shutters with that wonderful baked velvet. It looks so cool. The thing that's great about the baked velvet is that it um, embosses with a matte finish so it doesn't have the typical shine that you get but then to make it look like a really old window I just sprinkled on a layer of the patina oxide I just kind of tapped it with paint I don't use embossing ink when I'm doing this I let the distress paint serve as the fixative for my powders and it just saves me a step and you know lazy crafters will find a way some fussy cut teacups from the collection. This is a beautiful filigree medallion from Funky Junkie Boutique. And again, I treated this with paints and embossing powders, then layered in some more flowers, created a little charm cluster here with clocks, a sweet little teacup, an Alice teacup. Here's Alice's dress and the white rabbit is in here hiding somewhere. There he is. Let me dig him out. These are all from the Funky Junkie Boutique. And this alarm clock, this is a brooch. I just took the pin bail off the back and turned it into this wonderful little element. And then this ribbon is from Funky Junkie Boutique. This is the um, natural 7 8 inch plaid from um, May Arts. There you go. Stenciled in some hearts using a Stamperia stencil, fire brick oxide ink, and crackle paste. And then look, guys, this turns over. What? It's a twofer. So on the back, I created this really fun waterfall feature. This is held with one of the new Tim Holtz um, hinge clips. I love how vintagey these look. I didn't even alter that. I liked it so much. Um, this was tricky, so I'm going to tell you how I did this. I wanted to use both sides of these beautiful images from the Alice collection. So I had to figure out a way to do a hinge, but I didn't want a big old hinge interfering. And if you can see, I used vellum. I cut pieces of vellum um, um, inch wide by the width of my images scored them down the middle, folded them, and created the hinges. And then I came in with um, Prima Design Tape and covered up anything that I didn't like the looks of. And I really love the way this turned out. It, it, um, it worked. 
So um, I'm going to have some little step out photos. I'm going to have some live action tutorial for you following this. Um, just so you can kind of see how this came together. This was a blast. I don't usually get my girly grunge on very often. I stick pretty much to frilly and shabby chic. and But this was a blast. So hang around. Um, there's some neat tutorials. And I'll put a link to my blog in the description panel where you'll find a linked supply list for everything used in this post. And um, don't go away. Talk a little bit about how I started this. Um, I've got a couple, I shared a couple of little process photos where we painted, then we added the Seth Aptor embossing powders, and then I cut this um, five by nine and a half inch piece of craft card stock and just adhered it. Cut the whole punch, and I did this on both sides. So now this is what I wanted to show you. Um, you know how you have a favorite paper collection for me lately? It's been Stamparia's Alice. Well, I have all these scraps. They're not big enough to do cards. They're not big enough. I mean, they're just pieces. So what I've done is I've distressed all the edges and then inked them up with gathered twigs, distressing. And now I'm going to take some distress collage medium and we're just gonna see what happens. This is just, we're just collaging and we're just gonna put these down and start building up layers and use up all of these little scraps to make kind of a cool background. So I have no idea where I'm going with this. We're just gonna work and layer and see what happens. I am keeping my rough edges out. Um, I kind of don't want those straight edges. So anything that's been roughed up.
top of this with another layer of collage medium just to kind of um, seal it. And my collage medium is getting a little old. I did spritz it a little bit with some um, water just to refresh it. But you can see that didn't take very long. And now we've got this kind of cool, layered, grungy, but not too grungy background going on. And this just needs to dry. And then we'll go on to the next part. So let me clean up and I'll be back to show you my next thought about how to use all these scraps. And look, I have enough left. I can do the back too. So I've put down, <laughs> this is a funny story. I was using, um, the whole time I thought I was using collage medium, I was using the crazing medium, but that's okay because that's what I wanted it to do ultimately anyway. Um, so I'm a step ahead of where I thought I was going to be. Now I'm gonna take my Gathered Twigs Distress Stain and I'm just gonna put a little puddle of it out here on my table. And I'm gonna hit it with some water. I just want this to be really thin. And I'm just gonna paint this over and it's gonna look scary, but don't panic. And hopefully all those little cracks in the crazing medium, this is gonna sink down into those and give us a really cool vintage finish. So I'm just gonna let that sit a minute or so. You can already see where it's picking up in certain places, which is so fun. And then I'm just gonna take a paper towel and go over the top. really awesome see how it got in different places I'm gonna flip this over do the same thing on the back and this does a couple of different things it gives it that really great vintage finish but it also kind of helps tie all those um, different patterned scraps together so this is super fun And I could have put a little less stain out, but I might hit the edges of my etc. tag with it just to add to there. And we'll just wait a second or two. Let that sink in a little bit, do its thing. See how it's getting in here? You can kind of see it working. It's really cool. And then just wipe down. And it's like you didn't turn it brown but you added into those little cracks this wonderful like vintage, like old book paper, how it will look. So I'm pretty happy with that, that's good. And here's a tip, I don't have water handy, so I'm just gonna wrap my paintbrush up in a wet baby wipe and I'll get to that in a bit. Okay, I wanna add some textured layers to this really cool background that we've created. Um, I'm liking how this is looking. So this is a Stamperia stencil. You can find this at the Funky Junkie Boutique. I've got a brand new jar of Ranger opaque crackle texture paste, but first I want to take black soot distress ink and a blending tool. And I wanna to add this checkerboard pattern down the side of my etc. tag. Lightly wipe that off the top. I didn't want to lift that because the cool thing about crackle, opaque crackle texture paste is that it will pick up that black color as it dries. And it's a really neat effect. 
that I like a lot. So I want that. I didn't want to. I didn't want to have to reposition this after. Oops! I just put my fingers. I'm such a messy mixed media crafter, guys. Those of you who are pros probably shudder as you watch me because I am definitely not a pro, but I like to mess around with it. So clean up that edge. I'm going to lift this, and that will dry. It dries fairly fast. And now, because <clears throat> the Queen of Hearts is a recurring theme, I want to stencil in these hearts down this edge, but I want those to be red. So I've got fired brick distress oxides and a blending tool. I'm just gonna pick this up and Get really good coverage over uh, mixed media. Glazes using oxides. So, and because these are simple shapes, I'm going to lift that stencil, clean it off, and go back in. Line it up. And now we're going to take this crackle and we're just going to fill in these hearts. And as it dries, it'll pick up that color, which is so neat. Just want to make sure I have even coverage. It doesn't necessarily have to be thick. I've got something here that's interfering, like a little... Just set that aside to dry and I don't want to put this back into my jar because it's got that red in it so I'm just gonna use a baby wipe to clean up my stencil I have a Prima Venetian shutter I bought this at I believe I got this at Funky Junkie a while back and I like how these open very fun I'm gonna bring my um, cracked pistachio back in way more than what I need. I just want a little. It's I always forget how thin this paint is. It's very fluid and because um, it's water-based so I often more often than not I end up with more than what I need. Messy mixed media hands. Sorry guys but that's how it goes. So I just want to brush like just I don't want them to be green, but I do want them to have just that color on them to tie them in with everything else we're doing. And now this is, while it's wet, I'm gonna take a piece of paper and I'm gonna take my baked velvet, sprinkle it over never done this before. We'll see what happens. 
Could be great, could be a disgust. I like that, that's so cool. And I'm just gonna like randomly with my finger put some of this green on. going to sprinkle this patina oxide over those wet areas to give this the look of a very weather-beaten old shutter. I'm excited about this. I have no idea how it's going to turn out. I love how this turned out. Look how neat that is. Can you see the mix of the, the paint with the wood with the um, vintage patina? It's a really neat look. So that's what it looked like before we did anything and that's what it looks like now. I think this is really cool. Here's our shutter and I traced around the back edge of it onto this scrap and got the white rabbit and the dormouse. Then I cut a three and a quarter by a three and a half piece of clear acrylic card stock. I adhered the image onto the back of the shutter. I filled the shutter with these sequins that I thought went really well with the colors I'm using. Then I put dries clear adhesive all the way around the edges, slipped. This was tricky, I'm not gonna lie. I had to slide it in underneath because these shutters move and it's still drying up but I think we can work with it without creating a problem. Um, it's important that you use an adhesive that dries clear. Okay guys, here goes nothing. Ooh, that was scary. I'm just gonna put this along the back. This is really strong glue. It sets up quickly. Ideally, I usually use my heat gun for this, but my glue isn't hot yet, so this will be just fine. And I'm handling this carefully because really um, that window pane needs more time to set up, but patience is not one of my virtues, so I'm kind of rushing it along. So isn't that cool? I love how that looks. Now we're finished. I love how this little tag turned out. The finishing details after I added the, sh the shutter shaker were these Prima flowers. I added in all our little embellishments that we altered earlier on. Um, these are just looped under the bow and um, adhered with glue. This sweet little clock, I just love how this turned out. Filled it with a punched image from the paper and then put the cabochon on, that's Funky Junky Boutique, and um, just super shabby, kind of a little bit grungy, a little bit shabby chic. I think the details in this are super fun. So I hope I shared some tips and tricks that you can use in your own crafty adventures. If so, I'd love to hear from you in the comments section below. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd love to have you along for the journey. I like to share lots of new ideas and techniques and tips that um, help you grow in your crafting, even as I'm growing every time I pull the paper out. So thanks for joining me, and I'm going to go get my craft on. Bye! Mm -hmm.